Welcome back everyone, Minipoo here, and today we have the Lenovo Legion 5 Pro model 16ACH6H. It's equipped with an AMD Ryzen 7 5800H, an RTX 3070, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 megahertz RAM, and a 512 gigabyte NVMe drive. The screen is 16 inches with a native resolution of 2560 by 1600 at 165 hertz. I picked the machine up at Walmart, which came in this black box. The front has the Legion graphics. The right side has the Legion graphics as well as a sticker of the machine. The back has the explosive label for batteries. The left side of the box has the specs and a price tag. The bottom has the seal for the specs of the box, such as weight limits and crushing. The top has a carry handle with the Lenovo logo on the left. Breaking the security seal on the top and flipping the lid back, we have the computer wrapped in black cloth surrounded by thick packing foam. To the right is a small box. Here we have the quick setup guide and the safety information. Inside the small box we have the wall adapter cable and the AC power adapter. Model ADL300 SDC3A and it's 300 watts. Also inside are two stickers. The styrofoam is pretty thick and covers the machine nicely. The black material that envelopes the laptop is thin and provides good protection from dust. The lid of the Lenovo 5 is very smooth to the touch. It has a small angle that runs from the back display hinge to the front corners on both sides. You can feel a ridge that is very slight. In the middle of the lid is the Legion logo that is very shiny depending on the light. The color of the lid is charcoal gray that sometimes looks darker depending on the angle and lighting. The front of the lid has a lip that makes it easy to open with one hand. On the back there are two hinges that connect the display to the body. The lid is not steel or iron as those will stick to a magnet. If I had a guess, the lid is made of some kind of strong aluminum. On the left, we have a ventilation port used for getting the heat out of the machine, a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port. It provides data transfer rates up to 10 gigabits per second. And using this on an external monitor, I tested it and I was able to get up to 144 hertz. This port also allows for connections such as external storage devices, printers, and external displays. It also supports DisplayPort 1.4. A combo audio jack used to connect headphones or headsets with a 3.5 millimeter plug. Along the front, there is nothing besides the lip of the lid. On the right side, we have a camera switch, which disables the camera. A USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A port. It's used to connect external USB devices such as keyboards, storage, mice, or printers, and supports speeds up to 5 gigabits per second. Another ventilation port, which is also used to exhaust hot air from the machine. This is the view from the rear. I really like how the machine incorporates the two-tone color of the black and the charcoal gray. The rear of the machine is plastic and not made of any metal except for the exhaust fins. Also, if you've not noticed, on all the exhaust ports, there is another piece of plastic that is very shiny. It makes the machine look like it has a three color scheme instead of two. I think that's a pretty cool design and maybe some people might have caught it. Anyway, we have the right side main exhaust port. A Realtek model RTL8168 forward slash 8111 network port and it supports up to 10 100 1000 megabits per second. It's used to connect an Ethernet RJ45 cable from a router or broadband modem for network or internet access. A USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port. It provides data transfer rates up to 10 gigabits per second. It supports Display Port 1.4. It has a maximum output resolution of 5120 by 3200 at 60 hertz and color depth of 24 bits per pixel. It also supports power input through USB-C. And for those into this, 
Here's a chart. It simply says you must have a 20 volt 3.25 amp or greater to be able to charge the machine while using it. Here we have three USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A ports. They support transfer speeds up to 5 gigabits per second. And you are able to connect other USB devices such as mentioned before. This port out of the four total on the machine features always on, letting you charge devices when the machine is off, sleep, or hibernating. A HDMI 2.1 port. This common port allows you to connect to a TV, external display, or another HDMI in enabled device. You will get audio output to go along with the video. On over we have the charging light and when connected to AC power it will be solid white when charge percentage is 91 to 100 percent, an amber color at 1 to 90 percent and it will be off when not connected to power. This is the power connector port. Use this to connect the power cord connected to the AC adapter to power your machine. Lastly we have the left side main exhaust port. Turning the machine over, we have a large intake area for the fans. There is no filter, so it will collect larger pieces of dust. There are 20 columns with slanted lines cut into the panel. The Legion sign is in the middle of the intake vents, with the Legion logo on top. Along the bottom panel, there is a long rubber foot with two short ones below on the left and right sides. This is the left speaker and the right speaker. Both are down firing and produce sound from the machine at 2 watts. The bottom panel is not plastic and is made of the same material as the lid. To remove the bottom, I use a size PH00 bit. There are 10 screws that need to be removed. These six screws are long screws, while these four are short screws. Once removed, pry the panel apart with a pry tool or a card. You know, I always use a credit card, even though I have the tool. Either of the outer corners will work best. With the panel removed, we are greeted to some nice looking insides. The RAM, wireless, and drive slots are covered for protection by black shields. Besides looking cool, the hardware may be covered because of the intake area having no kind of screen or filter. Don't forget to disconnect the battery cable before messing about. It took me just over 50 seconds as it was pretty snug in there. I had to work a little harder than usual to do this. It was pretty stiff. Next, these six screws need to be removed to access the drives, RAM, and the wireless. The shields are not attracted to a magnet and seems to be made out of the same material as the body of the laptop. Going over the machine, we have the rear right exhaust, the right side exhaust, the right side exhaust fan, a USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A port, a network port to connect an Ethernet RJ45 cable, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070 with 8GB of GDDR6, and having a 140 watt TGP, a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type C port, three USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A ports, the Ryzen 7 5800H at 3.2 GHz. It has eight cores, 16 threads with a max speed of 4.4 GHz. The CPU also features onboard Radeon graphics. A HDMI 2.1 port. On over we have the charging light, a power connector port, one RAM bank of two supporting up to 32 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 megahertz RAM, the rear left exhaust, the left side exhaust, the left side exhaust fan, the Realtek Wi-Fi 6 combo card which supports 802.11ax, AC, A, B, G, N, and also has Bluetooth 5.2, model RTL 8852AE, a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port, The combo audio jack, 
the NVMe slot 1 with a 512 gigabyte drive installed. It's PCI Express Gen 3 times 4. It supports 2242 and 2280 sizes. The left side speaker, the second RAM bank of 2 with both having 8 gigabytes of RAM installed. The battery power connector, a 4 cell light polymer 80 watt battery that supports Rapid Charge Pro which will charge the battery to 50% in 30 minutes. The second M.2 slot for an NVMe drive, the CR2016 CMOS battery. This is used for keeping the BIOS settings. It maintains the time, date, drives and other configuration settings when the machine is shut down. The camera shutter switch and the right side speaker. Both fans are not metal and feel like plastic. Pretty similar feel to the Dell G15. Here are a few close-up photos. The back panel has a good build quality and is made of the same material as the lid. So, you know, it's aluminum. I'm just gonna say it, it's aluminum. That's my conclusion. The panel is lined with plastic and is not reactive to a magnet. The wording, the arc reactor of Legion, is stamped inside. To reassemble, put back all the shields and reattach the battery power cable. Gently push the bottom panel back on. Gently push down to engage the catches and then put the screws in. The lid can be opened with one finger without issue and the weight seems pretty balanced. Inside we have another protector for the screen and the keys along with a brochure about the ultimate support for one year, which is actually a little longer. Wobbling the screen back and forth from each corner, the strength of the material can be felt and doesn't bend as much like some of the other models out there. Just touching the machine feels like premium quality. The layout of the keys are pretty standard with all keys being black and the font in white. The function keys along the top double to increase and decrease the volume, brightness, turn airplane mode on and off, disable the touchpad, open the Lenovo Advantage app, control media playback and more. The layout has a numpad area to the right that's manageable with the keys being slightly shorter in width. The layout also features full size arrow keys that are larger than the ones on most separate keyboards which is a plus. Typing on this keyboard feels really good and is comparable to typing on an Alienware M15R3 if you've ever used one of those. It's quieter and takes slightly less force to push the keys. At the center top above the keyboard area there is a power button with an LED. When pushed it makes a small click sound. The button will indicate the power modes of the machine by color. Red for performance mode, blue is for quiet mode, and white is the balance mode. If it's blinking, it will insinuate that the machine is sleeping, and if the light is off, then the machine could be hibernating or it could be actually turned off. The touchpad, like a lot of good ones out there, support all the gestures using one, two, three, and even four fingers. These can be used to scroll pages, switch virtual desktops, zoom, and more. The plastic touchpad didn't cause any drag while using it and worked quite well for being non-glass. All the keys are backlit using zoned RGB. There are three preset schemes with the fourth being off. As for stickers, there are four of them. The bottom left has the Ryzen 7, Radeon graphics, and the Nvidia RTX. They are a tad crooked, but nothing too noticeable unless you are just looking for it. On the right side, there is an e-support tag that can be scanned and a cheat sheet for the performance modes. To the right of that, there is a Lenovo logo made of metal. The Legion 5 Pro has some great build quality. As I press around on the keyboard area, I'm having to press harder than usual, which is a good sign. The webcam is located at the top center of the display. This is the camera lens. It's capable of taking photos at 1280 by 720 at 96 dpi and a bit depth of 24. 
Video can be captured at 1280 by 720 at 30 FPS with two channel audio at 48 kilohertz reaching 166 kilobits per second. I was able to reach 6033 kilobits per second on the video. It's not much for a camera, but for a webcam, it should do just well. When the camera is in use, the camera light will turn a white color. This is the left and right side microphones. If you are getting this screen, then your camera is disabled by the physical button camera switch on the right side of the machine. Here are some sample photos and video. The Lenovo 5 Pro features a 16-inch WQXGA 2560x1600 IPS panel. It has a 165Hz refresh rate, brightness of 500 nits, and supports G-Sync and FreeSync. Here are some different angles of the panel. This is the speaker test. Next, I'll show some technical info and benchmarks of the CPU and GPU. But first, I have to do this. The removal of the antivirus software as I find it useless for as long as I can remember.
blame the beasts. Heaven or hell. I like a baby. Mmm, <laughs> that smells good. What's that? Oh, hands off, mister. It's chuba de la gum. It's a local recipe. Hey, Doc. Hello, Mr. Winters. I've got your daughter's results back, and I'd like you to come in to talk about them. How about the next Thursday, 4 o'clock? No problem. No problem. We'll, be there. we'll be there. That was the, that was doc. the doc. She'll see us next week. What's your dad? <laughs> Is the package safe? What are you talking about? Where's Chris Redfield? Friendly. Who are you? What's going on? Oh no. They're coming. Please tell me you have a gun. No, why would I? Hey, are you listening? Hey!
There's no end to them. I still wait. Come on already. Stretch those red strings out to me and finish this. Kasane! So, how was the test? Pretty easy as usual. How about you? to the shelter. should take care of all the other readings around here. Yes. Kasane! I saved that boy! Nagi! You're okay! Mission timeline 50% expended. Arming gas mine. Hostile spy plane established overhead. Hostile 
Sentry turret active. Good effect. Keep doing what you are doing, BFD. Hostiles. The view high above our broadcast location tonight, the Staples Center in Los Angeles. With Craig Anthony and Brett Perry, this is Kevin Harlan. We'll be hearing D.A. take it away. Well, the ceremony was delayed, and understandably so. But it Thank you, D.A. And Brent, these teams boasting great depth. Many feel 
That's a hallmark of a great front office. If you go back and you look, Kevin, at some of the that tinkering about bringing in a veteran or just one piece to make that next step for that one matchup or that one series, finding contributions like that up and down the roster, absolutely, that can make a difference. So the opening lineup for the Heat, Adebayo is out there with Jones, and there's Jimmy Butler, and it's Robinson, and it's none in at the one spot. And for Los Angeles, LeBron and Davis, the incredible forward pair. Bradley is out there with Green, and it's McGee in at the pivot spot, manning the middle. Robinson passes to Nunn. Good ball movement here by Miami, and the basket is good. Really good job there. That's the definition of the inside-out game. Butler kicks to Nunn. He can't hit that time. So Los Angeles will take it the other way. Islands. Then there's LaMarcus Aldridge. Then there's DeJounte Murray. And it's Forbes in at the two guard. Murray, the pass to DeRozan. No good. And Charlotte will go the other way with it. You know, discussing Biombo, it's hard not to think back to game three of the Eastern Conference Finals against the Cleveland Cavaliers, is it? I mean, how about 39 minutes? Only seven points scored, but how about 26 rebounds to lead his team to victory? He actually had a terrific series all the way around and then parlayed that. From the elbow, and good. Got the friendly bounce off the right side of the rim. And the offensive energy of DeRozan won him that shot. He never stops working the floor, looking for those opportunities. Now, here's Rogier. Passes it to Bridges. Back to Rogier. Just five to shoot. Count the basket. Oh, great. Minnesota Timberwolves. So here is Miami's starting group. LeBron James is out there with Morning. Then it's O'Neal. Then there's Hardaway. And it's Wade in at the shooting guard. Now LeBron. O'Neal trying to break free. And LeBron gets it to go with the assist by Wade. Well, the basketball mind that Dwayne Wade possesses is so special. What understanding and feel for where his guys will be. Here's Cassell. Gugliotta passes to Garnett. Pass to Cassell. Just five on the clock. Well, being aggressive and assertive, the big man snatching the rebound. Here's Hardaway. Not going to go that time. And Minnesota will come the other way. And let's catch up with our sideline reporter, David Aldridge. Hey, Kevin, I did have a chance to talk with Minnesota's head coach. One point he made to his players was they're going to try to attack us where we live. Right at home, in the paint, at the rim. We have to be ready to contest shots, play physical, and match their intensity. Guys, we will all find out together how this plays out. Thank you, David. Here's Serbiak after Tim Hardaway's bucket. Hard to figure out how he doesn't knock that one down. No defender in sight. Here's Wade. And he makes the bucket, gets the whistle, and now a three-point play chance here for him. What's up? That play shows focus and a will to score. Dwayne Wade welcomes that kind of hitting at the rim. Come on now. And this is his first trip to the line tonight. in the final stages of his career you know Dwayne Wade is still very competitive this guy is a sure fire hall of famer who understands how to win guys Grisell kicks to love will it go and morning sends it back that'll be Minnesota as it goes out of bounds Timberwolves retain possession let's take another look at the staunch defense during that mobile one block 
some intimidation right away. Got to show those shooters you're going to be there all night long. Performance. Okay, here we go. I have it on ultra fidelity, so it's maxed out. All right, it's been a while since I played this, but uh, here we go. I really hate this part. Really hate this part. Everything all right? Oh, I'm good. God. I'm good. Guys, I really hate this part. I really, really hate this part. I'm dead serious. I don't. <sighs> and so let's. Oh, thank God. See, I didn't even try to cuss, man. I didn't mean to do that. Oh, God. I hate this part. It's really dark. Russ? Yeah? Can you just... talk? About what? About anything. Big fan of this place. <sighs> and it's not unlike yourself, it's also sensitive to the dark. Oh yeah? Meaning it should go on automatically when the lights go out. I'm gonna die from this game. Take that. But anyway, this is Half Life Alex, and I know I gotta go in there. I remember. Alright, this is enough for the demo for this, uh. Lenovo Legion. I'm, I'm stopping right here. I'm not going in there. Okay, I'm not going in there. I'm done <sighs> All right Yeah, it's, this this is it okay, Unlike the one level I just got off of oh a mouse I Went on and loaded this one up because this level actually makes a lot of machines stutter So um, yeah And sorry for walking so slow, I just haven't played this game in such a long time. Huh. Alex? Yeah. Alex. Safe for people? Uh, yeah. I use them all the time. Are you sure? Yeah, they're great. Alex. They never get old. Out of there. Boys, girls. And there's some other items over in that area. Man, it's so awesome. Anything <clears throat> about the quarantine zone? Actually, the word quarantine comes from the Italian quaranta giorni, uh, which means 40 days, the period that all ships were required to be isolated before crew could go ashore during the Black Death. All right. Cool. So you turn until the laser goes through.
doing that? Oh boy. Yeah, be careful. The Lenovo Legion 5 features software that runs in the background. The software, named Lenovo Vantage, has a few main sections with some of them overlapping, meaning you'll find some of the links in other subsections. The top portion gives you a visual representation of your GPU, CPU, VRAM, and SSD. Clicking the info button will take you to a different screen called My Device. Here you will see the health condition of your machine, which is made up of the processor, memory, and storage. Clicking the Learn More link will take you to the Windows About page and the Windows Storage page for the storage section. On down, you have the software status. There's System Update, which performs critical updates for Windows 10. Smart Performance will try to make your machine faster. You can do this manually or let Lenovo do it for 30 bucks a year. Right. Anyway, Hardware Scan will scan the hardware on your machine and run a test to see if they are in working order. The option to download professional diagnostic tools is also available to the right as well as creating snapshots and the ability to recover bad sectors on drives. In the System Tools area, you have System Update with the option to change some settings, and it will give you the history of your updates. The Macro Key area will let you set up some custom inputs. Power has a wealth of information that lets you adjust the Vantage Toolbar, check battery condition, and the temperature. The ability to turn on rapid charge and a mode to conserve battery longevity. On down, you can choose to have your machine to start when the lid is open and to enable or disable always on USB. The audio tab lets you turn the microphone on and off and adjust the volume. Display and camera tab allows you to adjust the screen temperature for eye strain. And for the camera, the ability to enable privacy mode, adjust brightness, contrast, and exposure. Input and accessories let you adjust how the special functions and F1 to F12 keys operate when pushed. Touchpad and mouse controls will take you to their respective Windows 10 screens for adjustments. Media is the same as display and camera. Hardware scan is the same as the one found in software status. Nahemic lets you fully customize the sound of your speakers but greatly takes advantage of headphones. There are many options available to fine tune here by using the EQ, profile, sound tracking, and more. Sadly, none of this was used during my sound test. X-Rite Color Assistant lets you quickly change the display color profile such as RGB, Rec 709, and any custom preferences you have set up. The Legion Edge is very useful. You can change the thermal profile by clicking the thermal mode icon or by using the function Q combination. Choose between performance, balance, and quiet. All tests were done in performance mode with the exception of PC Mark, which used quiet mode. Network Boost is found on many routers and is used to adjust prioritization of apps while gaming. Auto Close will close certain apps when a game starts. Hybrid Mode is enabled here and in the BIOS and changes can only be made after a reboot. This option lets you use the discrete graphics exclusively to give you the best performance when gaming. This also comes at the expense of battery life. By using hybrid mode, you will increase your battery life by allowing the computer to decide which graphics chipset to use with certain programs. Overdrive increases the response time of the display. Touchpad lock locks the pad during gameplay, which is very useful. Wi-Fi security is a service that helps protect your machine while in public using a wireless network. The lighting section controls the four zone RGB keyboard. Select from the full spectrum of the rainbow and combined effects such as breathe, smooth, wave left and right, and the brightness and finally you can turn it completely off. You can view your warranty by hovering above the blue check mark and clicking further lets you choose other warranty options. Support takes you to the warranty page with links to a user guide, the Lenovo community, and social media. The content library has a lot of useful articles to read to help answer some questions you may have, some even linking back to the software or the area you need to manipulate. I'm sure you'll find something useful in this section. My overall thoughts on the Lenovo Legion 5 Pro are good. I've never owned a Lenovo product before and if this is the level of quality then I will continue to support them. For the hardware inside I expected the thermals to be somewhat disappointing. We all know that some machines with just a 1050 Ti and an i5-7300 
will get very hot and throttle. But now we have a machine that is way powerful, yet able to perform very well despite having faster hardware that puts out way more heat. I guess what I'm trying to say is, without a doubt, the Ryzen 7 5800H is very efficient. And we also know that the RTX 3070 is a great GPU, but what's amazing is that these two inside of the Legion 5 Pro chassis showcases some impressive thermals. Running at a high resolution along with performance mode had the machine staying way below 90C. I've never seen this in a gaming laptop without some kind of undervolting and or repasting. This is really telling of the build quality of the Legion 5 Pro as some similar configured laptops run a lot warmer. In my opinion, this is truly a step forward for laptop gaming. The build quality is good and after some more research I found out that the body is aluminum. This is a premium feature on a laptop and can really help with heat dissipation and in most cases drive up the price but not here as the listed price was a real steal. The keyboard felt really good to type on and the striking distance felt just right. The full size arrow keys in my opinion is a plus and having a numeric pad to the right is nice although the keys are a little narrow. Having almost all ports on the rear is nice especially if you want a clean look but I kept wanting another USB type A on the left side. The Legion 5's body overall has a quiet look that won't draw attention while off but if it's hibernating the breathing logo gives off the feeling that a sleeping giant is nearby. I mean, it's not far from the truth. This thing is powerful. The lip on the lid is a nice touch, which is hidden when looking from the top. This makes it so much easier to open. I mentioned earlier that I love how the machine almost has a three-tone look, which is most apparent by the exhaust vents. I really don't have any negatives about the machine. It almost seems perfect. Thermals are good. Playing in performance mode is actually quieter than some of my other machines. Build quality is exceptional and it's G-Sync and FreeSync compatible. I have read that by switching out the memory, you will get slightly faster performance, but I'm quite pleased with the default that's included. Maybe down the road, I'll switch, but it's really not an issue at the moment. I guess this would be a negative as I'm sure the company knew about it. Anyway, if you do decide to get this machine, it's going to be a chore. I had to visit a lot of Walmarts to get it and only scored one while on vacation. All I can say is good luck because you're gonna need it. You may try the Lenovo site, although I'm sure there will be a price increase. And with that said, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please share and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Mean Poo, out.